every every remembrance of the fallen heroes of the past uh, first and uh, world war actually it's done on the 11th uh on the 11th hour of the 11th uh of the month of november which is 11th month um over 100 years ago the <coughs> month centenary last year and uh these people actually paid the ultimate sacrifice and uh, it's good to always remember them because they they are our heroes I'm talking about heroes, um, I just want to talk about someone, even though he didn't take part in the, in the last, in the World War, his time predated the first civil war. But the image of the man up there, his name is Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson. I happened to be in the pub with some of my colleagues, about two or three weeks ago, we were having a stand-up drink of, for one of us, and I saw the you know, the portrait of this man on the wall. And I just mentioned that, wow, such a young looking man, a vice admiral. And um, there was a professor sitting next to me and he said, oh, that man, that picture must have been taken before he lost his arm. And that got me a bit curious, so I had to search about him. And I realized that even though he died at the age of 47, okay. as a vice admiral, he paid so much in terms of, I mean, as at the time of his death, he had lost one right eye, a right arm, and his left leg, all in fighting for his country. This is someone who was a very brave man. I mean, the story had it that when he was shot by, um, when he was shot on his right hand, within 30 minutes of his arm being amputated, he was back at the deck of a ship commanding the fight. I mean, just, just, I mean, what I read about, I was just so amazed. If you have the time, go and search about him. Um, he, he took a very big part in, uh, in the Battle of Trafalgar, which was very prominent at the time. And I just thought I need to mention this as part of the heroes, even though he was not involved in the world war that we have remembrance about. But these are people who have paid the sacrifice, uh, paid the ultimate sacrifice for the uh, peace that we all enjoy today. All right. Um, Today I want to talk about some things to remember about our God. I know it's Remembrance Day and I try to come up with a topic or a title that can really match what we're talking about. We'll be reading from the book of uh, Joshua and it's, it's, it's a bit lengthy but I'll try to do it within a short time. Apparently, uh, in recent times, I've started getting used to speaking for like two hours because of my job. And if you see me getting too long, please give me a sign. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those, uh, what, the hazard of the job, I think. But it's not too long, so don't, don't, be, too, don't be too worried. Yes, uh, let's read the Bible in Joshua 23, verse 1 to 16. After a long time, had passed, and the Lord had given Israel rest from all their enemies around them. Joshua, by, by then a very old man, summoned all Israel, their elders, their leaders, elders, judges, and officials, and said to them, I am very old. You yourselves have seen everything the Lord your God has done to all these nations for their sake. It was the Lord your God who fought for you. Remember how I have allotted as an inheritance for your tribes, all the land of the nations that remain. The nations I conquered. Between the Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea in the west, the Lord your God himself would push them out for your sake. He would drive them out before you, and you will take possession of the land as the Lord your God promised you. Be very strong, be careful to obey that be careful to be all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, without turning aside to the right or to the left. Do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them, but you are to hold fast to the Lord your God as you have until now. The Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nations, to this day, no one has been able to withstand you. One of you routed a thousand, because the Lord your God fights for you. 
just as he promised. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. But if you turn away and ally yourselves with the survivors of these nations that remain among you, as you intermarry with them and associate with them, then you may be sure that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you. Instead, they will become snares and traps for you, whips on your backs and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from the good land which the Lord your God has given you. Now I am about to go the way of all the earth. You know with all your hearts and soul that not one of all the good promise the Lord your God gave gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. But just as all the good things the Lord your God has promised, you have come to, to you. So he will bring on you all the evil things he has threatened you, threatened until the Lord your God has destroyed you from this good land he has given you. If you violate the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, the Lord's anger will burn against you, and you will quickly perish from the good land he has given you. Please, let's pray before we start. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that we want to listen to your word. We thank you, God, that we can have the opportunity to remember those who uh, passed away in, in fighting for these countries. Father, we thank you, God, that um, we are so privileged to listen to the scripture this morning. We beg you that help us to open our hearts to your very word and let's, uh, uh, let's be impacted by the scriptures this, uh, this morning, Lord. I pray that God, that um, as we remember things about you, our lives will change and be better for you, we pray God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yes, um, this is Joshua talking to, to the elders. All right, Joshua is a man who we all know is a man after God's own heart. He's been there with the Israelites from, right from the time of Egypt to the time they crossed through the, uh, the Red Sea. And we all know that he was among the 12 that was sent to spy the land of Canaan. And just uh, only him and um, Caleb were the only one that stood, you know, they were honest to God and were willing to go into the land. The others were so scared that he gave a negative news when they came back from spying on the land. And um, here Joshua was warning the Israelites because they've enjoyed peace after moving to the promised land. They have enjoyed what you could call relative peace because every nation around them, having heard about the great things that God did in, the, in, the, in their life, were scared and they, were, they kept, they had a peace treaty with them. Uh, to go further, I, uh, there's, there's this popular as well. Someone described the word Bible to mean basic instruction before leaving the earth. <laughs> and I want to use that to, uh, as a parallel to what uh, Joshua was doing. See, Joshua was old and was about to die. He knew that his time was drawing near and he was just given an instruction. Because he knew that the Israelites were living among nations that could influence their lives negatively. Because he knew that the gods surrounding them were, were, were not, you know, the, I mean, the nations around them were serving other gods <coughs> that, did not, that did not honor the kind of God that Israelites worship. And for this reason that uh, he was going to go, he took it upon himself to tell them to remember who God was. And I would like to phrase, I want to summarize what Joshua told them under two points. That means the first one is to remember God's strength. Because Joshua told them about the good thing that God did for them, and at the same time, he warned them that there's a consequence if they fail to honor those things that God promised them. All right, uh, I'm going to read from verse 3 to five, very, uh, to 6 very quickly. It says, You yourself have seen everything the Lord your God has done to all these nations for your sake. It was the Lord your God who fought for you. Remember how I have allotted as an inheritance your tribes, all, all the land of the nations that remain, the nations I conquered, 
between the Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea, Mediterranean Sea in the west. The Lord your God himself will push them out for your sake. He will drive them out before you and you will, and you will take possession of their land as the Lord your God promised you. Be very strong, be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the Lord Moses without turning aside to the right or to the left. Now, it's very easy to forget how strong the God we serve is. You know, in today's world, there's so many things that tend to distract us. The desire to survive, the desire to, to achieve greatness, the desire to have a happy home, the desire to have a happy family, that desire to, to pay our bills, basically, the desire to survive. And this is part of what Joshua had in mind that, look, the Israelites, in their quest to survive, there's a tendency for them to forget the strength, to forget what God has been achieving for them. And that's why he told them to remember. Okay, for us, I want us to, there's some, uh, some few things I want to just draw our attention to about God's strength. It's not, it's not synchronized, so I have to <laughs> check into, make sure I'm looking at the right one. We need to remember God's strength in our lives. Because remembering God's strength helps us to understand the kind of God we serve. It helps us to understand how to value the relationship that God actually wants us to have with Him. But if we are too distracted about ourselves, about how we need to be comfortable, about how to, you know, to just go about things we desire, because there's that tendency as, as human beings to want to just live the way we want. We need, to, we need to remind ourselves about God's strength. And the first thing I want to talk about is that we can depend on God's strength. As it's shown there in Hebrews 13, it says, Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. We need to depend on God's strength because He has promised that He will always be there for us. I know sometimes in our struggles, there's that, I mean, when we're so overwhelmed with worries, we forget that God is actually there for us. But God is, 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 is a promise, and like we read about his, uh, when Joshua was talking to the Israelites, he never failed in any promise he gave to them. Even today, God is not going to fail in his promise. But what we need to do is remember that God is there. He has promised that he will never leave us. See, Satan can make us feel like, oh, God is far. Because when we see trouble, when we see challenges, we tend to, 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 uh, to give up. We tend to feel like we're on our own. But God is there. God is always at our side. He will always keep his promise. He said he will never forsake us. Please, let's always remember that God is, is there on our side. Okay? We can also depend on God's protection. In his word in Genesis 15, it says, I am your shield, your great reward. This was God talking to Abraham. He said, it's our shield. I mean, when you think of protection, in today's world of insecurity, of troubles, who else can we lean on to for protection that is stronger than God? None. But we need to just keep reminding ourselves that our relationship with God helps us to trust in God's strength to protect us in any kind of challenges we might be going through, in any kind of trouble. I know, I mean, sometimes when you listen to the news, there's always those negative news to scare us. I mean, sometimes when I talk to some people who are going to London, one of the things I'm scared about going, I'm scared about going to London is the news about studying. I mean, it's, it's there. And I just tell myself that, well, I don't want to go and live in London. You know, the fear is always there. But in life, there will always be fear. I read somewhere that the, the, uh, the thing about fear, you need to fear, I mean, uh, don't let me refer, let me get the wrong quote. But the thing about fear is to fear fear itself. Yeah. There's that quote I saw somewhere. And, you know, fear is something terrible. It can make us to lose focus in the things we need to do. But God says he's our shield. What's your relationship with God like? If you have a smooth, loving relationship with God, you find that 
you feel confident. You will not feel any threat about situations around you. We can also depend on God's power. In Isaiah 41 verse 10, it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my righteous right hand. See, God has our back in any situation. We need to be confident in this as we go about life. As Christians, and this is what makes us different from the rest of the world. We have the word of God to reassure us and help us to just know that, look, there's nothing to worry about. We need to walk with confidence because we have God on our side. People out there in the world may not have God because they don't believe in the same God that we trust in. They have all sorts of worries, all sorts of fears, all sorts of terrifying thoughts about what will happen next. I know for everyone we're concerned about what Brexit will be. We'll be like, yes. But we should not, we should, we should not be terrified. We can depend on God's power to overcome any situation we face in this life. This is just to remind us that God has got the strength to protect us. Okay? We can also depend on God's provision. The same Isaiah 41, the second part of it says, I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. See, God will always provide for us. It's, 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 it's just unimaginable. I mean, the part we read in the book of Joshua, it said one person routed a thousand. You can imagine what kind of instrument could we have used if not for God. So with God, things that look unbelievable are just possible. So it's, it, it's our provider. I mean, there's this song, Jehovah Jireh, our provider, his grace is sufficient for me. God is, is, our, <laughs> is our provider. I just want us to know that, look, as Christians, as disciples, yet we've got to work, yet we've got to do what we've got to do, but God is there for us. He's got everything in abundance. He will continue to provide for us, and therefore, we need not to worry. That's right. We can depend on God's leading. In John 10, 4, it says, When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. God is willing to lead us. But do we listen to his voice? See, we listen to God's voice when we read the word of God. When we study, his, when we study the Bible, and have that close relationship with him. But if we don't pay attention to his word, it's difficult to know when God is even speaking to us. I mean, God might, I mean, no one knows what God looks like, but he's going to use different situations in our life to speak to us. Yeah. But we will not know this if we don't have a relationship with God. Our relationship with God is something that is so important and we can enhance this through reading the Bible, studying the Bible on a daily basis. And listen to those words. God is willing to lead us in the right direction. Things out there in the world might look so nice and glowing and attractive, but God's way is the right way. And He's going to lead us in the right way when we listen to Him through His words. We can also depend on God's purpose. In Jeremiah 29 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God has great purpose, great plans for every one of us. But if we don't connect with God, we'll not be able to tap from that abundance He has in store for us. And this comes from the relationship we have, we have with Him. You know, the, the world we live in, with all the kind of news, tend to make us believe that certain things are not possible. And we tend to believe those distracting news, distracting news rather. But from the word of God, we know that God's, God's plan for us is, is to give us abundance of what we desire. So he said, it's, 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 it plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Our future in God is secure if we make sure we have our relationship with him. We're still, we're still on our first point. We can depend on God's rest. 
In Matthew 11, 28, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. We all know that there's no rest in this world. Every day we wake up, we struggle, we still don't finish what, whatever it is we plan to do for that day. There's still loads and loads to do. But we keep, we keep, we keep struggling. I mean, this morning when I woke up, I was feeling so tired and like, there's still much more to do. But with God, He's going to give us rest. He's going to give us peace. He's going to give us that comfort that only Him can provide. But if we look at the world we live in, trust me, there's no peace. There's enough, even in the job we do, there's enough to worry us. At home, there's enough responsibilities to, to, to make us tremble. I mean, even in relationships, there are things that are there to, to make us feel like, look, there's so much challenge out there. But with God, we always find rest. Say, so come to me, you who are weary and are burdened. What are those things burdening your heart? What are the worries? What are the things that make you feel like I cannot continue this race as Christians? What are the things that are making us struggle? God is there with an open arm telling us that we can depend on Him. He's there, He's going to just provide everything for us. Another one says we can depend on God's cleansing. First John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and prefer us from all unrighteousness. But we need to confess our sins. We need to be open with our weakness. Because God is willing to forgive every sin. What are those sins that we are struggling with? That we are not willing to let go. Remember God is there. He sees everything. And is willing to cleanse us if only we can open up and just free ourselves. If you don't free yourselves, there's no way we can get that freedom. Okay? So God is there. He's I mean, we can depend on him, you know, giving us the cleansing. If only we can just be open and get help. Then the last one, thought, we can depend on God's goodness. Psalm 81, uh, Psalm uh, 84, verse 11. For the, Lord, for, the, for, the, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk Whose walk is, blame, is blameless? When our walk is blameless, God is just there for us. So it can depend on God's goodness. So we've got about three more of those and then we'll, we'll move on. All right, we can also depend on God's faithfulness. 1 Samuel 12, verse 22 it says, For the sake of his great name, the Lord will not reject his people because the Lord was pleased to make, to make you his own. So our God is faithful. He's a faithful God. For the sake of his name, he will not reject us. No matter what, God will always be there for us. I know sometimes our guilt makes us to feel we're far away from God. But God is always there with an open arm. He wants to have a relationship with us. Don't let your guilt make you feel far away from God. God is faithful. He's always willing. If only you can come to Him. He's willing. He's a faithful God. He will never reject His people. But we need to make that move first. And that's how great our God is. Okay, we can look better on God's guidance. Psalm 25, 9 says, he guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his ways. I mean, these are very good things to remember. Mm. At times, we feel so overwhelmed. I mean, I remember I, I, last week, I was feeling so overwhelmed about the things I needed to do. Um, Monday is a very, I mean, I'm, I'm sure not many people look forward to Mondays <laughs> because of there's so much to do. I, I tried to do a poll, a poll in the class and I asked my student that which day of the week did they consider the best day of the week? I was surprised but a few of them said Monday, but most of them said Friday. 
<laughs> because Friday is when everybody is looking forward to, to go and relax and as if money will never come, but it will still surely come, you know. So last week I was really so overwhelmed because I'd not prepared my notes for the lectures I had. I have, normally I have two classes on Mondays, 11 to 1 and 4 to 5.30. And I was feeling so overwhelmed because it just requires to make those lectures interesting. And I have another one for Tuesday. But to be honest, that Sunday evening, I was in my, in my feeling of being overwhelmed. I just went and prayed and just went to sleep. <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> I woke up in the night and I felt so at peace. Yeah. Even though I knew that I was this work to do. And as the week as the week went through, I started asking myself, so what, what was I really worried about? Because everything just went so smooth, the classes went so well, and I knew myself that I had a great time throughout that week. So I took time to reflect to what was really making me feel so overwhelmed. I couldn't place it. And sometimes that's the way it is with us. If we forget that God is there to lighten the burden, yeah. God is there to make things, to make the rough path smooth. Oh, yes. We tend to depend on our own strength. And because of those worries, we won't add more burden on ourselves. Right. This was my experience last week, and it just taught me to always look up to God. No matter how much we feel the challenge ahead of us is, take a moment to step back and have that moment with God. See, stepping back helps you to see things in a different light. And this is what I realized. Because last, last, the last week just went so smoothly. And I knew it was God that was guiding me through. At the end of the day, I mean, at the end of the week, I felt so, so great. But anyway, it's another weekend, and I'm started, I've started out feeling of, of being overwhelmed again. I, oh, Monday. In the seventh. I will always remember to, to depend on God. And that's why we need to remind ourselves these things. We always get carried away, but when we have that reminder that God is there, it makes things a lot better. We can depend on God's wise plans. In Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God works for the good of those who love him. See, God has great and wise plans for one of us. All right? And in, in, in all things, he works for the good of those who love him. God will always work for our good. Yeah. We only, only need to love God. We need to have that small relationship with him. We need to trust God. Naturally, as human beings, we believe we can do everything by our own strength. Mm -hmm. But God is always there. He will work for our own good and purpose. Uh, as the second point I'll be talking about is we need to remember God's standard. We've reminded ourselves about God's strength in all these areas that we can depend on God. But we need to remember God's standard for us. I will want us to quickly read Joshua 23, verse 15 to 16. But just as the good things, sorry, but just as all the good things the Lord your God has promised you have come to you. So he will bring on you all the evil things he has threatened. Until the Lord your God has destroyed you from this good land he has given you. If you violate the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, the Lord's anger will burn against you, and you will quickly perish from the good land he has given you. You see, um, most of the time when you read about God's promise in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, it always comes with those conditions that if you turn away, there's a consequence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Joshua was so concerned about the Israelites at this point that there's that tendency for them to be tempted by the nations around them because Naturally, the grass looks good on the other side, right? Yep. Even as Christians, sometimes we look at the life of those who are not Christians. We tend to feel that 
No, some of them might be good about what they're doing. And therefore, we want to compromise. We want to rationalize the kind of life that we live in. And this was why Joshua was so concerned and started warning the Israelites not to go against God's covenant because there are consequences. Just like he has promised and he has done all those great things for them, it will take God nothing to withdraw all those things if they turn against him. So there are, there are, so, there are so many things to distract and there's also the possibility of our hearts being hardened. Because even the Bible says, do not harden your heart. In the two references in Hebrews, there are Hebrews 3.15 and, and Hebrews 4.7. See, when you get used to doing things in certain ways that are not in accordance to God's word, there's a tendency for the heart to get hardened. Because you get used to it. We get comfortable to, with certain ways of doing things. So, um, one thing we need to also be aware of about the distraction out there is that they are very subtle. They don't look as aggressive or as hard as the standard from God. And that is why, if we're not careful, we find ourselves slipping into those ways of the world. Some examples I have up here, how we compromise or rationalize. I call one the sin of behavior. We all know that it's wrong to, to, to fornicate, right? To get uh, into adultery, drunkenness, murder, all this stealing. These are very obvious sins. But then, sometimes we feel like it's okay to lie. They call it white lies, right? These are compromises. Complaining, or yelling, or, or boasting. They are not so obvious, but we, we practice this. And these are, you know, Compromises because these are not God's standard. That's right. Even slandering or being quarrelsome. I call this the sense of the mouth. What the other was just the, the sense of behavior. We do this because it's not so obvious, but they are very subtle, but they are sinful. Another example is the emotions. Sometimes we criticize the, sin, the sinful emotions like hatred, you know, being rebellious, having a bad temper, malice. These are quite obvious. But sometimes we find it difficult to forgive ourselves. And we don't see anything wrong with that. Sometimes we have those bitter feelings or feeling envious or jealousy or greed. Because these are not very obvious. They're in our heart. People cannot see them. And we just feel it's okay to live like that. These are not God's standard. These are just compromising and you know, rationalizing sin. Even to be selfish or to have those arrogant or even lost. Or when we are faithless in the things that we do. We don't trust God enough. We believe that all these things, we can just do them by ourselves. We don't rely on God. This are ways of compromising or rationalizing God's standard. Sorry, I forgot to move that. <laughs> okay. But I say we've got to focus on God's standard if we need to remember what Joshua reminded the Israelites. So we do not only need to resist sin, but we also need to walk in the spirit. In Galatians 5, 16 it says, So I say, walk by the spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. We need the spirit of God to help us to be able to discern between the evil and the right. We need to walk in the spirit of God to be able to have that clear distinction in what we do when it comes to our relationship with God. We need to live our life not just against something, but for something. We need to have a purpose, which is living according to the purpose of God for our lives. So we're talking about God's standard. So earlier I talked about sins of behavior, which is fornication, adultery, drunkenness, all those things. But we need to also have what we call the spirit-filled behavior, which is kindness, righteousness. Obedience, goodness, courage, 
endurance, to be gentle, having self-control, sincerity, submissiveness, servanthood, and being impartial. These are what I will call the spirit-filled behavior, being led by the Spirit of God. This comes in our relationship with God, being led by the Spirit of God. Another, of course, standard, I'm coming to the end of the summer very soon. So, you are tired, right? Yeah, we need to reject the sins of the world, like lying, which we talked about earlier on, complaining, yelling, and, you know, disputing, slandering, by fighting, or being quarrelsome. I need to spirit, embrace a spirit filled mouth, which is truthfulness, being truthful, no matter what, being thankful. Should appreciation, you know, gentle answers. Sometimes, this is very common in relationship. When you talk to one another, the response is not gentle enough, and it can just cause some flaring up. Gentle answers, being sensitive, having praises, pleasant words. In our relationship in particular, all these things are very important because we tend to overlook this and it leads to those things. So we need to embrace this, this, a, a spirit-filled you know, attitude. We need to throw away this, the uh, sinful emotions like hatred, rebellion, bad temper, anger, malice. I want to practice the spirit-filled emotions, love, peace, a gentle spirit, gladness, joy, patience, compassion. You can imagine if our lives are filled with this spirit-filled lifestyle, what a peaceful world is going to be, what a peaceful home every one of us is going to have. What a peaceful uh, community we're going to have. And the last point here yes, is not, not a mind filled with sin, but if but mind filled with the Spirit, forgiving one another, hope, being appreciative of each other, humility, being humble. Wisdom, faith, and gratitude. In our relationship with one another, we need to practice all this. In our relationship and our community, where we work, we need to put all this to practice. These are, the, these are things that distinguish us as Christians. We see other people out there, most of these things, they don't put them into practice, and there's a tendency for us to feel like it's normal. It might be normal, but it's not God's standard. And we're talking about God's standard. We need to embrace God's standard in whatever we do. So in summary, some things to remember about God, we've already talked about them. First, we need to, we need to remind, remember God's standard for us as Christians. I want to remember God's strength for us. I pray that as we go into the week, remember to live according to God's standard so that people, we know that we are different and we're not, we're, not, we're not really part of this world. So we should not forget to walk in the, in the light of God. Thank you very much.